Hey everybody, it's Party Lead. Welcome back to our Age of Wonders 4 Let's Play featuring the God King Gurgle of the Growth. As we get started here today, folks, I just want to really quickly thank you first for the absolutely infectious levels of enthusiasm I saw in the comments of the previous episode. Oh my goodness, there was some amazing creative writing, there were some great suggestions with regards to how to rename Gorpit, and some great ideas with regards to how the faction itself can evolve over time too. Folks, I read the comments, so if you have any thoughts, opinions, feelings you'd like to express, or anything of the sort, drop them in the comments down below. And that aside, if you've enjoyed the series thus far, and if you'd like to see the series to its conclusion, go ahead and hit that like button, and leave a comment letting me know as much, because those likes and comments let me know quite directly exactly what people are enjoying on the channel, and exactly what I should do more or less of, so it has a very direct impact on what you see on the channel. With that said... Let's go ahead and get this party started, shall we? The first order of business is going to be the renaming of Gore Pit. I saw a multitude of excellent suggestions in the comments of the previous episode, but one stood out for a few reasons. A, it was brought up by quite a few of you individually, completely separately from each other, so that's got to say something. And B, it is such an excellent just culmination of our faction's origin story that I can't resist. I'm kind of disappointed in myself that I didn't come up with this myself, actually, but Gore Pit shall henceforth be known as Spore Pit, because this is the pit from whence all the spores did come. I, I, think, I think it's great. It works so nicely, and it ties into the original Gore Pit name as well. What are the chances? What are the chances? But folks, again, I saw a huge selection of excellent name ideas. Keep those in your back pocket because as we build more cities, as we develop further, we'll have more opportunities to, you know, customize our naming conventions and stuff like that. So we're going to keep this going because I quite enjoy, you know, creating a custom world like this. It, it just brings that extra bit of uh, flavor, in my mind at least. Apart from Spore Pit, let's also take a look at Gurgle himself because he has managed to level up. And I do think, and it seems as though some of you in the comments agree, that uh, experienced leader is the way to go. That plus two experience per turn for all non-hero units in the army is absolutely huge because as your uh, units level up, they gain quite a few buffs to their health and stuff like that. And it's quite a valuable thing to have. And the sooner you have that experience gain starts to accumulate, the more it accumulates more quickly, right? So we might as well start with experience leader and then we can take a look at some of the other options based on how we develop Gurgle over time. On which note, many of you were suggesting that we do replace his uh, Blight Staff with excessive force because it matches our barbarian aesthetic and vibe a bit more, and I see your point. However, that's something I'm kind of wrestling with right now, and I would love to hear more input if more people have opinions. Basically, where my head's at is, the whole point of Gurgle was that he was different, and that's why he is the anointed god king, so to speak, right? He was born with different coloration, he was born shorter, more stout, shorter arms, shorter legs. He's physically different, like physiologically different. He's he's uh, different in his capabilities as well. Rather than your classic barbarian warrior, he's almost this uh, shaman with the staff of blight and all that. So I'm still trying to figure out exactly how his uh, story develops over time. I'm open to character development, obviously, and switching from this magic casting angle to something like using excessive force, because my goodness, that is quite a bit of power behind that piece of equipment, but uh, yeah, I would love to hear your thoughts as we move forward. For the time being, I'll stick with the uh, Blight Staff here, and we'll, uh, we'll see where it goes over time. But with that all done, let's go ahead and move our newly acquired unit into this army of Gurgul, and uh, let's also quickly take a look at our uh, situation with regards to growth gonna be weird using that word to refer to regular growth as opposed to our faction, but I suppose I mean both here. Now, the plan is to secure the Desecrated Temple, and if you'll recall, the Desecrated Temple gives us a bit of a benefit based on how many research posts are in the uh, attached city's domain. On taking a look at this uh, overlay, you can see that we actually have quite a few research posts available centered around this province over here. So I'm thinking we establish an outpost here, and then we can go ahead and expand to this research post and this research post. And we also have access to a, a gold mine over here with an iron deposit too. And oh, there's a research post down here as well, and another one down over here too. It looks like Fangvale is uh, developing in this general direction. So we should be able to secure all of these research posts. There's another one down over here. I, we can't get that far from all the way up there without a few upgrades. But uh, hypothetically speaking, 
a city that's established over here would be able to grow in quite a few different directions to acquire these additional research posts and ultimately maximize the benefit of the desecrated temple. So I do think we're going to go ahead and send Gurgle up over uh, to, let's say here, sure, it can be anywhere in the province after all, and we'll have him build an outpost. Let's get that done. We are able to, you know, build farms around the area as well to maximize growth. We've got, I mean, there's a gold mine available here too. I think this is a pretty sweet spot for uh, for our city, for our second city. And our first city, Spore Pit, is going to continue pushing northwards to Crawler's Nest here. Again, this will take advantage of uh, quarries in the city's domain. And as you can see, we have quite a few options for additional quarries en route. And uh, we have one that we've secured already as well. So I think that makes good sense, getting Spore Pit pushing up that way towards Crawler's Nest and uh, getting whatever our second city ends up being called, uh, sort of securing this half of the northern coastline uh, as well as the Desecrated Temple. With that said, I know last session I was very excited to dive into the Desecrated Temple sooner rather than later, but I'm starting to think that maybe we hold off on that for the time being. We'll establish this second city, we'll grow it a little bit, we'll move towards the Desecrated Temple, and once we eventually have this uh, province under our control, maybe then we'll dive in to actually deal with the uh, guards within, because a silver level wonder is actually quite challenging, and I don't want to lose this campaign before it even takes off, right? So instead, uh, Gurgle is actually going to make his way over towards uh, the Crawler's Nest, because this is a bronze tier ancient wonder, so it should be a lot easier to take care of, and uh, it'll still give us a taste of uh, engaging with wonders and stuff like that, right? So we'll go ahead and do that, and at the same time, these guys will continue exploring up over here. I wouldn't be surprised if this is the edge of uh, the northern coast. But once they're done there, we'll start pushing down south, I suppose, to explore whatever else there is to explore. Though it does look like we're close to the corner of the map down here. That's fine. That's fine. We can work with that. Anyway, we have our spell ready to launch as well. That's the Entwined Thrall. We don't need that just quite yet. Spore Pit is recruiting a warrior. They'll arrive in the next turn. And when our second city gets established, we can take a look at recruiting a second hero as well, just so we can push aggressively in multiple directions without having to worry too much about, uh, you know, getting stack wiped or something like that. We also have a new Empire Development skill available. Let's take a look at that. What do we got here? Ooh. We actually have access to Soil Tenders. 75 Imperium... Uh, I'll hang tight for the time being. Uh, upgrading an outpost to a city costs 200 Imperium, so I want to have that in the bank. And in a couple turns time, we'll go ahead and secure uh, soil tenders. Actually, how long does an outpost take here? It'll take two turns? Oh, so it might be irrelevant. Spore Pit, you're going to expand next turn? Fine. We'll hold off until next turn because it doesn't make a difference, really. End the turn here, though. See what the AI gets up to and then uh, adjust accordingly if necessary, though I highly doubt the AI is going to do too much here. Looking okay, looking okay. Let's go ahead and move the scouts. Well, I was originally going to send them down south, but this is about as south as they can go. Ooh, Altar of Elements. Hello. Can I select you? No. It just It's just within the fog of war, it seems like. I guess I could hover. Nah, okay, fine. We'll explore it at some other point in time. Let's go ahead and send you guys over this way, I suppose. Sure. See what else there is uh, beyond you know, this region over here. Meanwhile, you can make your way over towards the Crawler's Nest. I wonder about this guy, if we want to mm, heal him. Or, you know what, here. We'll, we'll, we'll send him up towards the Crawler's Nest, and uh, we'll get you exploring the edge. Yet, yeah, no surprise there. And what we'll do is we'll bring you back, and uh, we'll, we'll do a little bit of swapping over here as this army goes up, just so we are at full strength as we dive into the Crawler's Nest. Uh, down over here, this guy is ready, so you know what, actually, we could do some swapping en route with him instead, I guess. And uh, separately, Spore Pit should be ready to expand. And so we're going to go ahead and secure the farm. Just as a reminder, we are eyeing the workshop over here, and I believe the vendor as well. Both of them will be boosted with the uh, construction of a farm, which is why, we're, well, why we've been holding off on building them. And you'll see the workshop over here, four turns and 60 gold. As soon as it gets boosted, it'll take three turns and 42 gold instead, which is not insignificant. Like, that's that's... It's not huge, but it's also not insignificant. Uh, we've also, by the way, reached the population level of 5, which means that the Town Hall level 2 is also boosted, which is something to consider, because this will give us access to Furies and War Shamans, and uh, it's probably not a bad idea to upgrade our uh, unit tiers sooner rather than later. We'll see how this plays out. I'm still thinking Workshop first and then the Town Hall, perhaps, but... Uh, 
might uh, might change my mind as we move forward. Uh, Vision of Victory has been acquired. Excellent friendly units in a one hex radius gain three fortune. Again, that's plus 30% crit hit chance with the you know three stacks all together. Not too bad. Let's go ahead and pick our next bit of research here. Ah oh, man, Wayfinder Enchantment is nice because your scouts can move a lot faster with the uh, Wayfinder Enchantment on them. Primal Mark isn't all that important to us right now because it gives Primal Strike to non-barbarian units. We only, I think, have one of those uh, with our uh, recently acquired unit from the, uh, uh, from, from the, oh god, what's it called? Encampment that we cleared. It's not called an encampment. The name is, is escaping me right now. Uh, so Primal Mark isn't really all that important. Poison Arrows is tempting. Makes base physical ranged attacks of enchanted unit deal plus four blight damage, minus two physical damage. This would apply to our uh, skirmishers that we have already, as you can see listed in the bottom of the tooltip. So sure, Poison Arrows it shall be. It'll take four turns, that's fine by me. And it seems as though we've acquired Archon Blood. I guess that means Fangvale over here has uh, invested in the Archon Blood. And what else do we have? Rainbow Clover as well. So Archon Blood uh, gives us plus 20 combat casting points, which is excellent. And Rainbow Clover gives us plus 100 relations with free cities and rulers. That'll come in handy, actually, countering the uh, general disdain this realm has for, uh, uh, for, for people of our inclinations. E evil is, is what I mean there. Uh, separately, we have Negotiation Succeeded. All right. Fangvale became our vassals. Good news. Proceed towards Bonded Vassalage. It'll take two turns, and Bonded Vassalage means that their territorial um, expanse counts towards our territories as far as the expansion victory is concerned, right? So we'll keep that going. Two turns, not too bad. And uh, separately, with the Spore Pit now having secured the farm over here, why don't we go ahead and get uh, Soil Tenders. Farms grant plus five food. Not a bad thing to have on hand. And uh, down here, next turn, this will be ready, and we'll have enough Imperium, if I recall the numbers correctly, we'll have enough Imperium to actually uh, immediately start upgrading it to a city. That way we'll gain some claims, and we'll be able to, you know, expand into the adjacent territories as well. Uh, let's go ahead and end the turn there. Yeah, sounds good to me. Looking pretty good, fairly comfortable nook of the, uh, the world we have here. Oh my goodness. Warping Wilds is definitely an interesting, uh, interesting modifier. It does, uh, it does break the the train up quite a bit. I've seen some comments with regards to how people feel about Warping Wilds. It definitely makes things a bit more um, abrupt and uh, <laughs> rough. Let's call it. I, I don't mind that. It is interesting to look at though, just to see how the blending and stuff works. But anyway, that aside, the outpost over here has been established, and I do think it's a good idea to just go ahead and found the uh, the, the city as opposed to, you know, build a work camp, wait those three turns, and then wait an additional three turns to actually get the city as well. Let's just go straight for it. Found a city of growth. I like how that's phrased because of our faction's name. That's actually quite nice. What do we have over here? It's a gold vein. All right, sounds good. And it's actually an occupied one, so that's good to know. Keep you moving this way. Looks like there's a watchtower over here, so we'll make our way towards that with our scout as up over here. Uh, Gurgle, are you able to... You know what? Here, let's do this. Let's get you up to here, buddy. And uh, let's get you out of this army, moving back towards friendly territory to heal up. And let's get you over here, because why not? Meanwhile, you can continue moving down as well, and we'll get these guys to stack together. That's three. Um, you know what? Spore Pit should probably be recruiting an additional unit. Let's get ourselves what over here? Another. Let's get a let's get a Sunderer going over here. They're quite handy, and uh, so that's one, two, three, four. Uh, this will be five, and then our additional hero will be six. So that'll be our second stack. At least that's how I'm feeling right now. Should be good. Outpost found it. Yep, very aware of that. Thank you very much. Spell ready to launch. Thank you very much. And the turn there. Cool. Smooth sailing so far. I'm sure all that's about to change shortly. I wouldn't be surprised if Crawler's Nest makes us crawl. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, if if what seems to be a relatively easy uh, situation here turns out to be quite uh, quite rough for us. Yeah, let's find the quickest route there, please, and thank you. Now let's go ahead and pull you down here and get you over here as well. Maybe get these guys some experience fighting these uh, marauders just to just to get them upgrade a little bit. You know, wouldn't be a bad idea. You're still good. Down over here. Hang tight. And buddy, let's get you moving towards that watchtower. Quickly as possible. Ooh. Meeting curious 
Neeson. Guildmistress Gerica Rodblock of the free city of Neeson greets you with some curiosity. Legendary Gurgle. It is rare for Neeson to meet an ascended champion like you. Nevertheless, we ask that you respect the territory and independence of Neeson. Let me see if the people of Neeson are of interest. Why not? Sure. They are not... are kind, but... Ooh, in some ways they are. Now again, like I've said previously, right, I am interested in conquering the world in a few different meanings of the term, through subjugation and through destruction, or however you'd like to phrase it. So, making everyone my vassal and then potentially integrating their cities is in keeping with our faction, and since these guys are evil, you know, they are likely to bend the knee, they already like us quite a bit, so why don't we try and make them our vassals too? Let's take a look at uh, Bangvale over here. We are... Oh, we are already in a state of bonded vassalage, it looks like. Negotiations succeeded. I guess that's what that was. All right, cool. So they're bonded vassals. It doesn't hurt to take them all the way to supreme vassalage. You can see all the benefits listed on screen right now, but it can wait. See, so here's the thing. If somebody else makes a free city into a vassal, you're not able to dislodge that relationship so easily. Neeson over here is not yet anybody else's vassal. So we should get in there, make them our vassal, and make sure that nobody else is able to do that, and then we can return to, you know, upgrading the relationship we have with Fangvale afterwards, because Fangvale is pretty much secured, then we'll have uh, secured Neeson as well, and uh, we can make progress with both of them at the same time, eventually maybe again integrating them, or just otherwise taking advantage of what looks like a fairly powerful free city, actually. So, sure, from Fangvale we shall withdraw our Whispering Stone, and we should instead give it to Neeson, over here, and in about eight turns time, we'll have our Pact of Cooperation, we'll slowly grow towards Vassalage, and see where that takes us. Uh, eventually, we'll have access to additional Whispering Stones, for the time being, we only have access to the one. There's a few things you can do to get more, uh, and at that point in time, it'll be a bit more easy for us to uh, maintain multiple relations at the same time. But this, this I think, is the right call. Uh, if these guys were good, then I might uh, approach this differently, but because they are already quite evil, I think it makes sense to try and integrate them into our empire, or otherwise join forces with them, right? Or have them join forces with us, technically speaking. Let's go ahead and pick up this food stash, why not? Go for it. Hypothetically, it would have been a potential idea to wait for this outpost to become a city, and then the food would end up there instead to help it grow a bit more quickly, but who knows, these guys might have an army waiting to pounce on it, right? So I didn't want to risk that, and because of that, uh, pick up though, Spore Pit is able to grow again already, and I suppose we could take these quarries to head up towards Crawler's Nest. I think that makes the most sense, given our current circumstances. Alternatively, we get another farm, so we grow a bit more quickly. Nah, let's uh, let's push up this way. Let's go ahead and secure the, uh, secure the quarry up over here and move towards Crawler's Nest. We will need to upgrade the city a little bit so we can expand a bit further, but that's not too far away. That's not too far away. All right. I believe that's our turn done. New Empire Development Skill available. What do we got? What do we got? Impressment. Unit Tier 1 units cost 30% less unit upkeep. That's not too bad. We're making a decent bit of gold already. Unit upkeep right now is not the biggest dent in our economy, um, but it's not bad to secure savings when possible. We don't have the Imperium required for it just quite yet, but something to consider. And separately, ooh, Knowledge Extraction. We don't need this just quite yet, but this will give us plus 50 knowledge per level of heroes defeated in combat. We're not facing off against heroes just quite yet, but when we eventually are, this is a good way to accelerate our rate of research, our rate of uh, intellectual growth, if you will. So that is something to consider. All right, very well. Don't have the uh, Imperium for the more relevant option just quite yet, and truth be told, I don't think we're in a rush to pick it up anyway. So with that all done, let's go ahead and hit the end turn button. Yeah, feeling pretty good about our situation. Surrounded by potential friends, that's always a good place to be, right? I say extremely nervously, expecting something to blow up in my face immediately as day 12 dawns. How are we looking? Looking okay? A little bit of uh, warping wilds up over here. All good. Keep creeping up towards the crawler's nest. Everyone's at full strength. Down over here, you're all at full strength too. How long before this recruitment is completed? One more turn. We'll let the Sunderer join, uh, and then maybe we'll go ahead and dive into uh, one of these guys. It's tempting. It's tempting to wait until a hero joins us, just so they can level up at the same time. We're about a turn away from being able to do that in an affordable and sensible manner, so sure, that works out nicely. 
you. Let's head on over to the uh, watchtower over here. See what it reveals. Quite a bit. Quite a bit. Is this a... Oh my goodness. We're kind of boxed in here, aren't we? And what is this? An altar of stars? And I just noticed the glowing lucid forest as well. Uh, how did I miss that earlier? Was that not revealed to us earlier? It must have been. We were like standing right next to it. Lucid forest. Another bronze ancient wonder. All right. Might be worth exploring sooner rather than later. You know, secure the uh, morale reward over here. That's always nice to have. When annexed, it counts as a conduit. Generating a huge, huge bit of mana. And plus two mana per conduit in the city domain as well. Adds the Astral Keeper unit to the Rally of Lieges too. Not too shabby. My goodness, the gold foil look has been so excellently executed. I would love to be able to speak to the artist to know their technique here because it is just that beautiful. I'm sorry. Every time I see it, I'm captivated by it. Anyway, powerful Astral Currents converge at this location. Rather than forming an ordinary mana node, these energies have crystallized into a forest of shimmering trees. Intricate branches and deep, meandering root systems suggest an interconnectedness to much in the universe. Souls, worlds, even ages. Time and space have no meaning here. That's quite cool. All right. And then separately, we have the Altar of Stars. A gold tier ancient wonder. So it'll be some time before we can hit this one. But my goodness, look at that. Look, it's so beautiful. Anyway, this will give us a knowledge reward when we inevitably take it for ourselves. And it also, wow, generates quite a bit of gold. Magic origin units require 50% less unit upkeep in this city domain. And it adds the Phoenix unit to the Rally of Legions. My goodness. Holy. All right. We're nowhere near capable of taking this on just quite yet. But one can dream, right? The Archon civilization raised these monolithic structures at great cost. Scholars speculate they were once utilized as portals to other worlds. However, with the Ziggurat's original builders now long gone, those with opportunistic and potentially sinister motives come to try and unravel its forgotten powers. Man, opportunistic and potentially sinister? That's that's me to a T. That's us. So we'll 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 figure things out. Neeson, once it gets integrated, might uh, might be our launch pad for uh, for a strike at the Altar of Stars. We'll see. We'll see how it plays out. But uh, what else do we have here? You guys are still able to move. What's the deal here? Haste berries. Ooh, when annexed gives a draft. Unique global effect. Founding, migrating, and absorbing cities takes... Wow, two fewer turns? That's kind of huge. Um, wouldn't mind securing this. Neeson might get it first, though. They've already secured the farm and research post here and a farm and research post in this direction, so there's no telling if they're committing to one direction or another. Looks like they've moved up north as well and uh, uh, westward too, so... Huh, they might beat us to this, but eventually when we integrate them, I guess we'll have it ourselves. It's 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 it's, it's, a, it's a magic material, so they would trade with us once they become our vassals. Alright. The fruit of the haysberry bush grows in the blink of an eye, with a popping sound that almost sounds like music. Those who have consumed the fruit speak of a fizzing sensation and a zesty, tangy taste, as well as of their limbs immediately becoming lighter. Very nice. By the way, let me know if you'd rather I don't read all of these... Uh, you know, little pop-ups and stuff. I find the world quite fascinating, and I do quite love the writing in this game. I think it's excellently done. So uh, unless y'all tell me in the comments to stop, I will keep reading the writing because I do think it's quite nice. Spore Pit's uh, granary has been built. Granary, granary. I'm never never quite sure, to be perfectly honest with you, but uh, one or the other. Let's go ahead and build the workshop. Helps with draft income and production income. Will help future things get built just a little bit faster. And then we can go ahead and upgrade the town hall to gain access to additional unit types. Uh, kind of tempted to go the other way around, truth be told. Kind of very tempted to go the other way around. You know what? Yeah. Let's go with the town hall first. I, I told you I might change my mind later. So let's go with the town hall upgrade first. Uh, because what we can do is we can secure, as we grow, additional quarries to get that uh, bump to our uh, production rate, right? So... I think that'll be fine, and eventually we will need to grow further up to actually get to Crawler's Nest here. So, uh, yeah, let's hit the end turn button and, you know, do exactly that. I believe we'll be diving into a battle shortly. We are very close to Crawler's Nest, and it seems as though we've met our first enemy, I presume, faction. So you are the inconsiderate God King Gurgle. I am Fire Queen Carissa the Red. Many Godier make war. I aim to make peace, even with the likes of you. Hmm. Carissa greets you with contempt, 
relations at negative 225 already. How do you greet Fire Queen Carissa the Red? I'm tempted to neither give a threatening welcome nor a welcome gift. Now, their affinities actually align with ours quite a bit. They are enthralled orcs, revolutionary diplomat. They like empires with multiple races. They like empires with vassals. That's us. They dislike empires with a larger domain. That'll eventually be us. And they dislike empires that trade grievances very well. Very well. Threat level vigilant. The ruler feels threatened by your empire, which affects your relations with them by negative 100 and also makes trading with them more costly. Hmm. I'm going to say farewell. Don't need to engage with them just quite yet, but where are they situated? We don't know where their capital is, but uh, how do we come across them? Where was the point of interaction up here? Oh, we're going to need seafaring, aren't we? We're going to need seafaring if we're going to compete with these guys because they're probably just across the uh, lake or whatever this will be. Fair enough, fair enough. Let's take a look at this. Um, so basic seafaring means that our units will be able to embark and use vessels to cross the water and flying and floating units will be able to travel over water as well. 50 Imperium is the cost there. I'm not in a rush right now, but maybe once we clear the crawler's nest, we'll, uh, we'll make our way up there with Gurgle just to see what's going on because we are blocked off down south, right, and towards the east, so... Uh, I guess it makes sense to explore uh, in a northward direction as our scout actually moves to the west, I guess, because this also looks kind of blocked off. Let's take a look either way. And yeah, wow, look at that. Neeson has actually expanded down to here. They have secured the research post here and they've secured the uh, haste berries as well. This is some magic material, but this, what is this? We got something over there. We'll check it out before we leave, but uh, yeah, it looks like we're going to get blocked out over here. We could also investigate some of these underground passages to see if there are other ways to uh, navigate past the water, for example, but we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there, or I guess rather we'll we'll cross that underpass when we get there. Orders required down over here. Let's go ahead and get you into this army quickly. That's four. The city of Thorn has been established. Again, I'm open to name suggestions, so drop them in the comments down below, please and thank you. Let's go ahead and establish a storehouse here right off the bat, I think, uh, just to increase our food income. Three turns away from pop growth, I could rush it with some Imperium, and that would allow me to do what? That would allow me to secure a Forester, potentially, and that would give a boost to the storehouse production, make it just a little bit faster. Seven turns is a long time to wait for a storehouse, that's for sure. But if I do give a boost, if I do, sorry, uh, grow our uh, our population, do I want to chase after a forester or do I want to chase after some of these research posts, right? I want to chase after the research posts. So, we'll build a storehouse, we'll take on the cost, we can hurry it if we deem it necessary, we're fine for the time being. I don't think we need to recruit any units over here just quite yet. Try and make this a bit of a research hub, I suppose. Let's not focus on unit production over here. So we'll keep this uh, producing food instead to try and grow the city a little bit more quickly. Uh, these guys have moved up. These guys are still here. We can go ahead and recruit an additional hero at this point in time. And uh, maybe war with Carissa the Red sooner rather than later. If they're just up there and if they're not in a very uh, threatening state, if they're actually already scared of us, then maybe it's time to push, right? Let's take a look at our recruitment options over here, see what we have. Deb Bloodfield from Fangvale. Ace Bloodfield from Fangvale. Karen Rodblock from uh, Neeson. Birgit Rodblock from Neeson, Orlau the Cleaver of our own, and Baba the Boar. Baba the Boar is a very cute name. Beast Trainer. Enables the recruitment of some animal units when governing a city. Oh, that could be interesting. Here we have Unyielding. When this unit's total hit points reaches 33% or lower, it becomes, for one turn, Berserk and Steadfast. And we have Arrogant. This unit has plus three defense and resistance against the attacks of a tier one unit. All right, all right, interesting stuff. Shadow Adept has plus three shadow affinity. When governing a city, the Empire gains plus three shadow affinity. Ooh, that's not bad. That's not bad. Hmm, all right, okay. Uh, Karen, Beast Trainer, familiar with that already. Ace Bloodfield from Fangvale is unstable. Upon sustaining damage, this unit teleports to a random location within two hexes. Works once per turn. And is also frail, negative 40 hit points. That's not for me, no. No, that's not for me at all. Unyielding. We're familiar with that too. Oh man, so tempting. Do we want to stay with our frog folk or do we uh, investigate in these, invest in these hulking artisans as well? Shadow Adept is kind of tempting. 
That is kind of tempting. But they have not been subjugated yet, so you know what? I'm going to avoid doing that right now. Again, when you're role-playing, sometimes you have to make suboptimal calls, and I think this is one of those. I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below about this call. I'm always open to uh, changing and tweaking my approach to make sure it is befitting our overall, uh, you know, thoughts and, 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 uh, and approach to the faction. Let's go with Baba the Boar here. Let's go with Baba the Boar. I think. What do you got here? Barbarian Axe, alright. You've got yourself a Barbarian Shield as well, okay. You are on a boar, I suppose. Is, this, is, is Baba your name or the boar's name? Yeah, let's go with this guy, sure. Vigor 1 as well. Plus 10 maximum hit points, sounds good. Let's recruit you. And show up at Spore Pit over here, that works for me. Let's pop you into this army. And uh, we're not going to uh, summon the additional uh, unit just quite yet. We can wait until the very last minute uh, to do that, so let's... Uh, I mean, I guess let's push up this way, right? Get these guys crossing the water and, and seeing what's uh, what's up there. Poison arrows have been researched. Let's go ahead and pick our next bit of research here. Vine Prison is the way to go, I think. It's quite powerful. It's, it's, a, it's quite a helpful spell to have on the battlefield. So let's go ahead with Vine Prison. And I think after that, we'll actually be able to select our uh, next tome. So that'll be interesting. Meanwhile, at Thorn, let's go ahead and establish Baba the Boar as the governor here. Increases food production, draft production, and knowledge production as well. And my goodness, he's he looks very big in this screen. Uh, let's take a look, actually, at our unit options. Ooh, now we're talking. Stormscale Serpent, Plague Serpent. That's very much in keeping with our faction. Dread Spider Hatchlings as well. Oh my goodness. This was definitely the right call. We got Vampire Spider Hatchlings. These guys can cause bleeding. Oh, the choices, the choices. Dire Penguins, Young Caustic Worm. Has the Charge Strike that helps cause more damage if they actually move a few hexes before hitting. Oh boy, I know I said that this wasn't going to be a unit recruitment hub, but uh, with this Governor, obviously that changes. Do I want the Plague Serpent? Hmm, seven and seven. Or do I want the uh, Young Caustic Worm with that charge strike, right? Three turns, 60 gold. Sure, let's get the Young Caustic Worm coming first. And uh, that might actually be our sixth unit in this stack. I, again, we can have additional um, additional stacks that don't have a hero, obviously. That is an option too. And armies will reinforce each other. So don't don't uh, don't worry too much about that. I, I am aware of that. And that is probably something we're going to invest in. But for the time being, yeah, let's secure the Young Caustic Worm. Three turns. They'll be able to group up and, and push north, I think, once we secure the ability to uh, cross the seas. Thorn founded. Spells ready to cast. Two of them. Poison arrows. Let's go ahead and uh, get you actually ready to cast, I suppose. And end the turn there. All right. I'm feeling really good about uh, our second hero here and uh, and the position of Thorn. Carissa is picking some stuff up and getting a bit more aggressive than I like. And I got the mana pickup too. I really should have rushed that. I just let it sit there. Ooh. So you are God King Gurgle of the Growth. I am not impressed. Tread carefully before I decide that your realm is actually worth conquering. Acreon the Endless greets you with contempt relations of negative 505 how do you greet void seer acreon the endless they are void seekers strategist warlord they like empires that have summoned units that'll be us soon they like empires that have defeated other empires that'll be us soon they don't like empires that trade grievances or empires with stronger research all right interesting interesting threat level wary the ruler feels threatened by our empire which is why they're uh, upset at us well one of the reasons why they're upset at us very well they are not aligned with us at all in terms of their affinities or anything like that i wouldn't be surprised if they're not uh evil either and what is this now harbingers of misfortune 30 turns to complete this quest my goodness dealing with watchers a distraught member of the growth council requests an urgent meeting terrible news my god king our scouts have reported sightings of an army of watchers roaming our lands our forebears told legends of these creatures, that they are bringers of death, and that seeing such a creature heralds 77 years of bad luck. We must drive it away immediately to prevent unrest in our cities. So the growth will panic when they notice the watchers are nearby. Quickly, O oh God King, you must dispatch them. Rewards will be improved race relations. 
interesting as a guaranteed reward this means all owned cities of that race will receive a temporary city stability bonus and all met free cities receive a relations bonus so i assume the race here being uh you know frog kind here uh and we'll also get a mystery bonus no need to panic i will take care of the watchers all right or educate yourselves witless beliefs of the growth must be renounced we could decline the quest and all of our cities will lose some stability for six turns that's not a good idea all free cities of the growth just the one will uh, be displeased and for six turns though we will gain some knowledge generation oh that's not bad 32 per turn for six turns that's not bad i don't have time for your superstitious nonsense i don't know i don't know i feel like we could take this on no need to panic i will take care of the watchers we will consume them absolutely feels like the more fitting option there where, where are these watchers what are you what are you doing here get out of here there is one set of watchers, or is it just the one army that has two units in it? I, I, I guess so. All right, fair enough. What are we actually dealing with over here? Lightning bolts, psychic gaze. <laughs> That's a scary number there. 36, yikes. We should be able to take these guys on. Sure, we might lose a unit or two in this army, but we should be able to take them on, right? At the same time, we have a Crawler's Nest up over here as well. Cool, looks like this will be a battlefield turn. And down over here is the army of Acreon. This is how we met them. Is there an underground passage here or something? Well, let's take a little peek. How did you come here? How did you come here? I am not sure. But I'm glad I have the uh, Whispering Stone here before they could get one in there. Because uh, I feel like they would try and vassalize these guys, so I'm glad I got the upper hand there. Not sure how these guys popped up over here, but we'll, t we'll take a look around. We'll take a look around. Hopefully they don't settle down over here. All right. Uh, Baba, do we move you first? Tempting, right? To deal with this first. Actually, let's, 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 yeah, sure. Let's, let's deal with this first. Let's go ahead and uh, recruit our, um, yeah, sure. Let's get the entwined thrall in here. I was wondering, do I wait until the recruitment at Thorn is done? Do I wait until the spell is cast? No, fine. Let's just do this. Let's go ahead and check really quickly that these guys are still able to move. They are indeed. So let's go ahead and cast our Entwined Thrall, get you in there, make this a full stack, and yeah, let's charge in and deal with this uh, right away. Low risk battle, it says, but I think we're still going to fight. Ooh, hello. Hang on a second. Encountering Harbingers of Misfortune. After a tense search and long march, your army comes face to face with the Roaming Watchers. The sight of the terrible creatures causes fear to ripple through the growth in your army. The deafening silence betrays the hesitation of your troops. Their morale won't hold. The Watchers have noticed your troops and prepare to attack. What will you do? I can order our disheartened troops to attack. We'll have discouraged attackers, which is negative 10 morale until the end of battle. I could provide a bounty for whoever brings me the head of a Watcher. We lose a bit of gold and we don't suffer the, uh, the discouraged attackers penalty. So that's helpful. We have plenty of gold, so I might actually do that. Or we could leave. Now is not the right time to attack. Hmm. I'm trying to figure out what's most in keeping with my character. Is an offer of gold fitting for this faction? I'm not 100% sure. For the time being, I'll lean towards yes, because it's a beneficial call, and we're not idiots just because we're fungal growths. We're working intelligently. But uh, again, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this one. But yeah, a bounty for whoever brings me the head of a Watcher. Aren't they all head? Either way, low-risk battle. Let's dive into it, because I want to experiment with our uh, entwined thrall over here, and I want to see these guys in action. Again, we're still early in this campaign. I think it's fun to see uh, combat, right? And again, let me know if you feel differently, but uh, I saw most of you agreed with my assessment of how we'll do auto-resolving in the future for battles that are too easy or battles that are kind of irrelevant to the grand scheme of things. We'll go ahead and auto-resolve those, but in these early days, I think it's fun to kind of check out our, uh, our enemies and our, our units as well. 80 HP on both of these guys. Again, a little scared about the Psychic Gaze over here, um, but it does have a one-turn cooldown, so at least there's that. We'll just have to keep an eye on our healing capabilities. Uh, Lady Baba the Boar is a melee-only individual. I should have changed their equipment in hindsight, but I believe if they carry the, uh, the giant uh, hammer, they can't actually ride their boar, if memory serves me correctly. But uh, we'll discuss that later, I suppose. Water. Units passing through or ending their turn on this hex will become wet for three turns. That makes us a bit more resistant to uh, fire. However, it does make us less resistant to lightning attacks, 
which uh, these guys very much use. So let's avoid that, shall we? Let's move you up to uh, here, and we should be able to get everybody else behind you. Let's see. Sure, so let's get you up to there. Let's get you up to there. Gonna position you. I'm almost tempted to position Baba the Boar up over here. Get obscured, and maybe come in from uh, from the sides to flank. That might be an opportunity there. Let's get uh, the Sunders up over here. Let's get you up over here, and let's get you entwined Thrall, who is able to use poison needles up over here. wonder how far these guys are going to push, actually, and what they're going to pull off. But hey, we're going to uh, trigger defense mode, shield wall to get uh, boosted defenses over here. No boosted resistance for adjacent units, but uh, at least these guys will have their boosted resistance too. End the turn there. Enter defense mode. Thank you very much. And let's see what we got here. Oh, Okay, not what I would have expected. You can continue to flank, I suppose. They are within range. We don't cause a lot of damage. Oh boy. All right, can we hit you with this? Poison Needle, not a lot of damage. If I go in for the melee, also not a lot of damage. This will be interesting. Can we hit you with the uh, Sundering? No, we cannot, okay. Gotta get a little bit closer, I suppose. How close? Can't even see with these guys in way. All right, let's go ahead and push you. Hmm. Push you up to here. And now I can at least see what we can do here. Sure, I guess I could nudge you up to there. I can get close enough to melee strike these guys. So here's what we'll do. Here's what we'll do. Let's get you up to here. Because then these two can uh, tag team on that. And you can come up with the uh, Sundering. Push you up to there, sure. Sundering attack on you. Hopefully we'll get the Sunder defenses. Good hit. Good Sundering. Excellent. And Buddy over here can roll up for the melee strike there, I suppose. Poison Needle does 16 damage. Melee strike does 12. Poison Needle also has a 60% chance of inflicting poisoned, which isn't shabby. If I get you up to here, 100% hit chance. First, you have to move. So let's get you right up there. And then let's get you over to here. Ah, these guys are immune to poison, unfortunately. That's okay, that's okay. Let's uh, soften you up a bit further. Good hit. And let's attack up this way. Almost tempted to try and uh, shield bash, but I don't think it's worth it. 73% chance to stun him. That's not terrible, but I think I'd rather just attack him. Go for it. The primal strike there. You as well. In with the primal strike. Decent damage. And down here. And with the Primal Strike, let's go for it. Not too bad. We're going to continue charging up this way. And hopefully we'll get some flanking done uh, early next turn. I do have the option to pop a Vision of Victory here. Probably should have popped that sooner, now that I think about it. That fortune would go a long way, but... Uh, no point popping it now, I suppose. We'll hang tight, we'll hang tight. I don't need to use Healing Roots or Song of the Reckless. Tempting as that is. You know what, actually. I changed my mind. Let's pop Song of the Reckless on these guys, so that uh, second Watcher gets some extra damage when these guys uh, go Berserk. And let's hit the end turn there. Sure. Enter defense mode, sure, go for it. What are you guys up to? Ooh, that's a lot of damage, man. That is a lot of damage. Oh, boy. Unfortunately, these guys have gone Berserk, or has that been removed? Are they not going to attack? Are they... Stunned. God damn it. <laughs> well played by the AI. Well played by the AI. All right. We can roll up this way. I mean, we, I don't think these guys can be flanked, actually. Wouldn't be surprised if that's the case, considering they're just a giant eye. Yes, they are immune to flanking. That's my foolishness, unfortunately. We're okay, though. We're okay. Because what we can do here is um, use our healing roots to uh, help these guys a little bit. We're in trouble. These guys are going to die. These guys are going to die. We can, we can try and keep them alive, but uh, they're probably going to die. What do we got here? I can finish you off. What if I hit you with this? No, that's not going to make a difference. All right, here. Let's finish you off with these guys. Get in there. Good stuff. Another one. Yep. And one more. Beautiful. Beautiful stuff. Now, what to do here? I can move up to then hit these guys from the side there. They'll do a little less damage, but we'll have a bit more room to move in. You guys can hit from range. 
13 damage. Oh, this is really not ideal. Don't love it, but you know what? Here, let's try it. Right from the side there. Let's go. One more. Yeah, all right. Not too bad. You're going to move in. Cause a decent bit of damage, actually. What if you get in there? 20 versus 25. All right. Easy math, that one. One and hit. Yeah, good stuff. Got the primal strike as well. And a bit more. Beauty. What to do with you? These guys are stunned, so I can't even get them out of here. If you move up, it's like barely any damage done. What if I pop a shield wall instead? Plus three defense. Hmm. <laughs> Reduces incoming physical damage, but uh, this is not that. 12 damage, eh? Yeah, these guys are screwed. They're not going to make it. They're not going to make it. All right. Pop this over here. Let's go. If we're lucky, this guy will get distracted by something else. I don't know. If we're lucky. Move Baba in. Let's go. Bit of work there. Cool. Was really hoping for a crit. No chance, but one can dream, right? End our turn there. Probably lose this unit. Regen is going to help a little bit. Oh, what? Nice. <laughs> attack of opportunity there, perhaps? I think it was trying to pull back to hit us, and uh, we got our attack of opportunity. Beautiful. I will gladly take that victory. Thank you very much. All right, excellent. Just barely survived there. But here we go. The aftermath of the Harbingers of Misfortune. Now that the Watchers are gone from your lands, the Growth Council contacts yours again. Contacts you again? A little typo, I think. Marvelous work, Gurgle. Just marvelous. We managed to contain any panic with regards to the Watchers' sightings, so it seems we are in the clear. All thanks to you, of course. The growth will hear of your victory. Perhaps our superstitious beliefs can be transformed into a virtue of our people. As a result, all cities of the growth gain 20 city stability for 6 turns. That's nice and helpful. And all free cities have improved relations for 18 turns. Cool. This victory proves that the growth are true warriors. Wow. That is a lot of draft for both Spore Pit and Throne. Okay. This victory shows that the growth should build better defenses. No. This encounter only illustrates that my empire can dominate any foe. I feel like this is an indication of, uh, of how capable we are as warriors, all things considered. It's, it's probably also the better choice of the three, but I also think it's the most fitting. So yes, this victory proves that the growth are true warriors. Nothing will stop us. Here's our uh, lovely young caustic worm. I definitely want you integrated in this army. Let's go ahead and pop, pop you out. Um, we'll we'll, we'll want to heal up over here or something. Let's get you in there. This should be fun. And Thorn, let's go ahead and recruit uh, what? What should we get? Because the draft that we acquired there was more than just one unit's worth. So as you can see, these uh, uh, th these units will take a lot less time to uh, recruit than usual. Dread Spider Hatchling, 6 and 6. Plague Serpent is probably the way to go, right? Just because they're so cool. Seven and seven. Hope I'm not going the wrong way here. <laughs> Tier two plague serpents is probably the way to go here. Inflicting diseased is not bad. It's it's also more in keeping than the storm scale serpent. That's why I'm leaning that way. And the the dread spider hatchling is also of course in keeping with the uh, with our uh, overall theme, right? With the blight and stuff. Let's go with the plague serpent. Sure. Two turns it'll take. And as you can see, it's already halfway done because of the leftover draft. And uh, Spore Pit is going to be in a similar situation where we'll be able to recruit some units in no time. But I'm going to hold on to that because uh, the Town Hall has almost been upgraded. And once that's done, it'll actually give us access to more units, right? So we'll hold off on that. Over here, these guys are ready to take out some of these Marauders just to uh, help level these units up a little bit. Uh, and that will, again, you know, give them some, uh, some boosts, as you can see, to their uh, HP in particular. Um, so yeah, I think we're going to do that, and, and, and Buddy over here is going to heal up a little bit. Cool. Meanwhile, we're going to dive into the Crawler's Nest to see what uh, challenge it has to offer. A little nervous, not going to lie, because uh, Wonders are supposed to be a bit more challenging. This is Bronze tier, so we should be okay, but it might still be just a little bit on the early side to, uh, to be sending these guys in. But hey, what's life without risks, right? Let's go. Explore. Lair of silk. The cave is dark and eerily silent as you approach. A thin layer of silky webbing covers the entrance. You and your party venture further through the maze-like cave, passing cocoons filled with all sorts of creatures while searching for the secrets hidden beneath the cobwebs. Before long, 
the webbing gets so thick that it becomes noticeably harder to move. Then, you hear something in the darkness. While you struggle to move through the sticky web, you hear the excited chitter of the cave's many-legged inhabitants. They can sense more prey. So we can slay these vile creatures and attack. Oh, low-risk battle, so we should be okay. We'd enter the battle with the Crawler's Nest guards, and the upcoming battle will have sprawling spider webs, which would do what? Several slowing spider web obstacles would be present. Fair enough. We could instead set fire to the webbing around us, which means no spider webs will be present in battle, but we'll have rampant fire. Several areas are flammable, obstacles, and they're on fire already to begin with. Okay. Um, hmm. I don't think we like fire. We are fungus, after all, so I don't think we like fire. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll not set fire to the webbing around us. I don't think it makes sense for our uh, faction as it is. So, uh, slay these vile creatures. Attack. Oh boy, okay, that is a sizable enemy army. Low risk battle, but we might lose a unit, maybe two. What do we got here? Dread spider, hatchlings, and hunter spiders. These guys can jump, which is always a little terrifying. I think we'll be okay. To the battlefield we go. This should be good. Securing our first wonder. Oh my goodness. That's a lot. That's a lot more webbing than I was anticipating. But you know what? I think we'll be fine. I think we'll be fine. We want them to come to us after all, right? We'll be okay. All right. Let's go ahead and get uh, Gurgle up to here. I think we can try and push up this way. Looks like they're pushing up this way themselves as well. So uh, sure, we'll, we'll try and follow suit. How far can we go here? Mm, the positioning isn't ideal, is it? All right. Let's get you up to there. Sure. Get you up to here. Keep moving up this way. Let's get you... I'm wondering if we can come around this way. I don't know if there's... Yeah, it looks like there's room. Maybe push in and flank. Uh, that doesn't look like there's actual passage there. All right, let's move you... Let's move you up this way. And let's get you... Coming up that way. Meanwhile, Gurgle himself can perhaps come up this way. I'm, I'm wondering about... Uh, flanking. I'm also wondering about getting flanked. Again, those guys can jump and stuff. So that's where things get a little nerve-wracking. Let's uh, move you up to here. Let's go. Face the right direction, please. Face the right direction. There we go. And uh, we can end the turn there. Enter defense mode. Cool. Let's see what these guys get up to. Moving very slowly. Moving very slowly. All right. Let's get you moving where? We could get up to there. If you creep up to here, we can actually get some hits in. So that's good. All right, let's get these guys up to here. That way their shield wall will actually impact these guys if they pop up over to there. I, I'm kind of tempted to take on that 75% as opposed to the 90% just to keep these guys a bit further back. Ah, they'll be fine in melee. They'll be okay. <laughs> let's go for it. And can I send these guys up as well? Oh, I can actually. Send you up to here. Let's go. Get you as far as we can get you. Not too far, but... What else are we going to do, right? And I'm almost tempted to, to send these guys around this way. Face that. I mean, I don't think you have facing. Do I pull you up this way? Or do I pull you up this way? Because, again, this front line is pretty much blocked off. So, you know what? Yeah, sure. Let's go ahead and pull you up this way. And let's go ahead and pull you over this way. Let's go. Cool. Uh, I'm almost tempted to drop Visions of Victory down over here. Give these guys a bit of a boost as they throw their uh, their javelins. Might be a little premature. Let's go for it. Let's go for it. Pop your javelin over here. Gonna spread the love a little bit. Sure. And pop your javelin up over here. Let's go. Good stuff. A little bit of extra damage there. You guys are gonna hang tight. You're gonna use your uh, shield wall over here. To benefit those guys and what's going to happen is these guys are probably going to jump behind our lines to flank us and we'll be in a bit of trouble but that's okay i'm uh, i'm expecting that end our turn there enter defense mode down over here that's all good Ooh, okay not what i would have expected we resisted the immobilization one of our units did get immobilized but we're overall okay all right good stuff good stuff uh okay so what am i thinking here these guys both have center defenses we could roll up they have blight resistance unfortunately if you go up into melee... Oh no, those guys have been immobilized, unfortunately. It's okay, not the end of the world. 
Not the end of the world at all. Um, hmm. If I send you up to here, we can hit these guys. All right, so let's roll you up to there. Let's go ahead and hit uh, these guys. Go for it. Good stuff. What about you? We could roll you up to here, or we could roll you... Uh, now, nah, let's go up this way. Hit him with the, uh, the magic blast. Soft him up a little bit. Hopefully get that hit. Come on. I'll take it. Just grazed, but I'll take it. These guys can maybe come up this way just to make some room over here. Um. Yep, push up this way. Toss your javelins up over here. Let's go. Good stuff. Good stuff. These guys can roll up. Go for it. Bit of a risk, but I think it's worthwhile. Decent damage there from the Primal Strike. And they've been immobilized, but they're in the right position now, so that's fine. And we can still get a Javelin throw in from these guys, even though they're immobilized. They just can't move, right? So let's go ahead and throw over here. Try and eliminate this one unit at least. Bit of damage there. And you, my good friend, are going to roll up this way. Probably going to draw aggro. We'll find out. Let's make sure we're facing the right direction. And do we want to heal? I think we're okay. We haven't taken nearly enough damage yet, so I think we're okay. Hmm. Let me check something here. Still have our times three fortune for a couple more turns. All right, cool. Let's end the turn there then. Just keep an eye on our combat casting points and our mana as well. Let's end the turn there. Let's not waste uh, either of those when, when we don't have to. What do these guys get up to? There's the jump. Happened to turn later than I expected, but it, it's fine. I was expecting it. What are we up to over here? Retaliate. Yeah, good stuff. Not amazing stuff, but it's something. We're going to have to keep these guys alive. And here we go. Drawing aggro. No surprise there. Nothing too bad. Retaliation did a decent bit of work there. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. All right. Not too bad at all. Uh, we can hit you. That Blight Weakness will work out for us. We can come in from here as well. We should be able to eliminate this guy in, uh, in, in one turn. So that's all well and good. Do we pop? the restore up over here 10 hit points and then we can get uh, the healing roots on there as well to really keep these guys alive the other option is of course to use our magic blast to cause what marginal damage oh if we hit these guys we'd be able to eliminate them tempting but you know what no i'd rather keep these guys alive so let's go ahead and use restore pop that there good stuff i might also hit them with the uh, healing roots but we'll see how this turn plays out otherwise uh, let's go ahead and hit you first. Let's go. Good stuff. There's a retaliation. We're okay. Come on, drop one more entity. Ah, so close. We're okay, though. Go ahead and flank you and finish you off. Yeah, that's the right call. Good hit. My god, that was a critical hit. Beauty. Beauty. Was that two critical hits? Yes, it was. That's that fortune kicking in. I need more of that. All right, let's get you rolling up over here. Get some work done. Come on. Give me some crits, baby. Come on. The primal strike. There's a retaliation. No luck. No luck. All right. A bit of damage there. This is unfortunate, eh? This is unfortunate. A retaliation might actually finish them off. All right, here. Hit you instead. Hope for a crit. Come on. God damn it. No luck. That's okay. Uh, I think I'm going to actually pop healing roots on them as well. Go for it. Keep them alive. Let's not take any losses. Hoping some retaliatory strikes over here will keep these guys alive while getting some kills in. And down over here, let's go ahead and strike away. This should do good. Alright, that's fine. There we go. And beauty. Alright, that's the turn done. Really relying on uh, retaliation over here. The regen over here. <laughs> Doing a lot of work. Good retaliation with a critical hit there. These guys might get wiped. Yikes. Oh, that was rough. Oh, and there's the jump and flank. Yeah, these guys are screwed. God damn. Was doing so well. We were doing so well until the end there. That's okay. That's okay. Couple losses here. There's not the end of the world. Regen removed up over there, unfortunately, but we're still okay. Retaliation down over here doing all right. Yeah, okay. We're good. We're good. I don't want to get too cocky. But we're feeling all right. Feeling all right. Send you up over there to finish that thing off. See, if I just finished off last turn, these guys might still be alive. I deserve the pain I've been given. I deserve it. All right, if I roll up and hit you, 70% chance to hit's not that great. 
if I roll up to here, can I really not hit that? Well, let's, let's roll up either way. Yeah, no line of sight. Wild. Okay, alright. Well, uh, let's go ahead and hit over here. Sure. Soften you up a bit. Just grazed. Come on. My luck. Because these guys can then finish you off, and these guys can finish you off. Alright, that'll be, that'll be good, I think. If I toss the javelins... 50% chance. What's the point? Let's head into melee. Let's go. Get the job done there. Good stuff. Make sure you're facing the right direction, please. Don't get flanked or anything. I think they're okay. And let's... Uh... Oh, boy. Yeah, let's finish you off as well. Just feels like, oh, if we finish them off in the retaliation, that would be so much nicer, but... We saw how that worked out last turn, right? Why take a risk? Why take a risk? Almost done here. Yeah, beauty. Got some morale boosts on our side. The morale drops on the enemy's side. Do I need more replenishment over here? I think we're okay with regen and stuff. We're probably fine. Yeah, let's go ahead and take that risk. End the turn there. We're okay. Yeah, looking good. They're fumbling and grazing, so we're doing fine there. Yeah, good stuff. And over here, ooh. Took some damage there. Good retaliation. Nice crit. Regen removed. That's fine. That's fine. These guys are able to roll up, flank these guys, not do a lot of damage, but uh, hey, it's something. We might want to actually heal these guys because they're pretty badly damaged. Might have been wiser to keep them back, truth be told. At least there was no retaliation there. You are able to fire with the magic blast. You are able to roll up and hit with the uh, poisonous spores as well. Sure, let's roll up to here. Pop the poisonous spores. Onto who? You know what? Onto you. Go for it. Try and eliminate both these guys this turn. That's good, they've been poisoned. Uh, do I roll you up and... Let's see, if I hit with this guy, they'll be eliminated. So that's good. So let's go ahead and roll up to here. And use our magic blast up here. Soften them up, maybe get a crit. Or not. And now hopefully... Ah, oh, so close, yet so far. Alright, you... Finish the job here. Well done. And you... Get a crit. Come on, baby. Get the job done. Or, you know what, actually... Do I want to use... Yeah, sure, you know what, why not? Let's try it. Go for it. Come on. Oh, don't you dare. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Beautiful stuff. I was worried we were going to start grazing and fumbling. Beautiful. Lost a unit, unfortunately, but hey, secured a wonder. I'll take it. I will absolutely take it. Victory is ours. Layer of Silk. Aftermath. After the spiders are dealt with, you can search the cave with ease. You find several cocoons, most of them empty or with their contents decayed. Then, one of your companions calls you over. This one's still breathing. You quickly free the living victim, and after a moment of respite, he is able to speak. Thank the Godir for your arrival. My name is Derek Rodblock of Neeson. We traveled here to investigate this so-called safe haven, and then... Well... He gestures towards the cocoons. I owe you my life, O God King, Derek Rodblock says. If you need my help in the future, you need only ask. So we received a lot of food at Spore Pit. Granting us a pop. Cool. And we could either send Derek Rodblock home to Neeson, which would actually be good aligned. Alright, fair enough. Improves our relations with Neeson for 18 turns. And Derek Rodblock is added to our recruitment pool. Alternatively, I strip him of his belongings and imprison him. Huh. Well, that's an interesting one. This is... This is... Uh, I'm, I'm kind of conflicted. Like, I know we're evil, but... It sending sending this guy to Neeson doesn't sound like a good action. It just sounds like a default action. But I suppose I could instead strip him instead, sorry, strip him of his belongings and throw him into our uh, into our dungeon that we don't have. Neeson will be upset, but they like us quite a bit already. They were at plus two hundred if memory serves me correctly, right? Or will it be forced down to negative one fifty for eighteen turns? could be expensive. 
that could be quite expensive. Yeah, let's go for it. <laughs> I don't know if that was the right call, folks. I don't know if that was the right call. I probably should have just sent him over to Nissan. These guys are... Okay, no. So, that wasn't the end total. That was just uh, a new sum that was going to be added. So, Nissan actually still likes us well enough, thanks to the Rainbow Clover that we acquired earlier, and of course, thanks to our origin as well. Good stuff, good stuff. We'll continue to try and develop this pact of cooperation. You can see that uh, we do have a competitor here, so we might want to boost allegiance a little bit. Um, you know what? Yeah, for 49 Imperium? I think so. Let's go for it. Four turns now to the Pact of Cooperation. We got to get there faster, right? We got to get there sooner. So let's work on that separately. Let's uh, continue to scout this general area and let's continue to uh, <laughs> heal these guys up before they move up north. Though we have some more units coming through shortly, right? Spore Pit is able to recruit more. We're just waiting for the Town Hall upgrade to complete. And down over here, Thorn is almost done recruiting a Plague Serpent, which uh, does that end up with... Uh with Gurgle, or does that end up with uh, Baba over here? I'm not 100% sure. I'm not 100% sure, but folks, that decision and many more will have to wait until next time. This is, what we're calling it a session, a slightly longer episode than I'd initially anticipated or intended, but uh, hey, a little bit here or there every once in a while, not the end of the world, right? Folks, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, you know what to do. Let me know by hitting the like button down below and by leaving a comment if you have any thoughts or opinions with regards to uh, the name of Thorn in particular or with regards to anything else as well. Let me know down below as always. Also as always, a massive thanks goes out to all of the channel members and patrons who've been supporting the channel on a monthly basis. Y'all keep us alive and running smoothly. And of course, a big old thanks goes out to each and every one of you for watching. Until next time. Cheers.